Okay, it looks like we're on. We're good. Okay. All right, let's call to order the Board of Library Trustees meeting for Tuesday, December 15th, 2020. Roll call, please. Trustee Metal. Here. Trustee Rule. Here. Trustee Smart. Here. Trustee Supplet. Here. Trustee Tangney. Here. President Sick. Here, and again, we are having this through Zoom based on guidelines for Cook County in the state of Illinois for uh, I know I should know the actual rule or something like that, but for, uh, for, for the amount of people in, in room, so we, we are being cautious in doing this over Zoom. Okay, do we have any public comments? I didn't see anything emailed to me. No public comment. Just double check one last time here. Okay, did not see anything there. Okay, let's go on to the liaison reports. Uh, let's go to the friends, Brian. Hello. Oh. So, um, well, our big thing is sales. So um, we had to make some adjustments this year. We had three garage sale sales in the garage, thanks to the, uh, and the library land has used the garage. Um, we were able to gross about $6,100 doing that. Um, we also made some changes to the bookstore where we had fixed pricing and instead of the donation. Plus we've been using in all our sales, more of the higher quality books so we were able to add some little, a little bit better pricing. Um, so uh, obviously fundraising is a big thing for us. So we're continuing to look for other ways to do fundraising. Um, obviously we were hoping to have a Christmas book sale um, that changed. Um, so we're also looking to expand into our online sales um, and uh, we're looking to recruit a couple members to help the book sale committee do that because um, it is it is pretty busy if you ever done eBay or any of those things. Um, plus we're down a few members, so we're chasing them off and uh, um, hopefully we'll get them back on board. Um, I'm sure people are thinking, no sales, why should I join? Um, hmm. So um, that's about it. Um, I wanted to uh, thank the library for letting us participate in the little free library program with Terry in the, in the bookmobile. I think that's been very successful and I think there's plans to pursue that in the future. Um, so we, we're excited about that. And then I wanted to say a big thank you to Mike and Shannon and all the staff there at the library that another great year of support from you guys and really makes it a lot easier for us to support you. And it's beautiful. You guys do a great job and we really appreciate everything you do for us. And that's about all I got. Yeah. And likewise, kind of quiet. <laughs> yeah. Likewise, Brian, everything you guys do. I mean, yeah. Uh, helping out and doing everything you guys can. It's, it, it, it's fantastic. I know it's hard right now, obviously with the sales and everything, but, but thank right. you for, for everybody. Keep on going. Any questions for Brian or comments? Happy holidays, Brian. <laughs> thank you. You too. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you very so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Let's go on to now to the foundation. Laurie. Hey, everybody. Good to see you. Good to see you. So uh, we've just dropped our 2021 annual appeal letters. We sent out 135 letters going to people that we, we connected with last year, but we didn't hear back from them. So we're giving them another chance this year. And we've also added two new board members and they brought some additional names to the table. They also penned a little note uh, onto the letters, letting people know that they were involved in the foundation board and looking for their support. So that meant we sent out, oh, and we sent out 208 letters to our current donors. So that's a total of 243, and we are beginning to get responses back. Um, advisory team member Jim Bristol brought Nick Papa Nicholas to the table, and through his contacts, they're donating $17,000 for new doors, framing, and hardware for the makerspace. Lou Newman from Praxa ECS has thus far donated $3,500 in almost new but in pristine condition. Um, four storage racks, one Nexus easel, six ne Nexus tablets, two Nexus petitions, four in-house fabricated work craft tables, and a 30-gallon silver trash can that looks like new. It is gorgeous. Uh, the library uh, staff went and picked up this furniture last week and Mike you can jump in and make a comment about um, this gentleman is closing down a business and they didn't want to ship all this fabulous equipment to Indiana I believe so 
through an interesting contact that I made Thanksgiving evening over cocktails. I seem to make my best deals over bourbon, I gotta say. Uh, the, uh, they're going back to collect some other uh, furniture items this week, I believe, Mike. You can talk about that later. Uh, we've submitted our purchase order for $47,576 in kitchen equipment, uh, recommended by the architect and the staff. Uh, we received on that PO, we received a discount of $34,961. The vendor will store the equipment and provide the insurance until we take delivery in April. Uh, January through November, the foundation received in-kind donations at a value of $22,863. This does not include any in-kind donations or cash discounts on items not yet received. For example, the doors, the framing, and the hardware. We'll book that once we receive it in uh, April. Uh, last week, we hosted our virtual cork popping event for our circle donors. We had 35 households attend with a total of 60 viewers. Uh, this gave the foundation the opportunity to say thank you to our most generous donors, uh, other than the monthly update that I provide every other month. And it gave us a chance to put the library board president and the executive director out in front of these people one more time. Um, our new donor recognition LED screen will soon be installed in the library in a recessed area just beyond the Cardinal Room and the display cases. We will attempt to update this on a quarterly basis. Uh, I will reach out to our current donors in January to notify them of the location of the screen and to make sure we have their names listed properly. Uh, and last month we had our board elections and we have a new secretary that's Joanne Gunderson. Frankly, Gary McClung and I were all reelected to our current positions. And with that, I'll take any questions. Anything? anything? I have a question. Yes, ma'am, Miss Smart. <laughs> so based on your report, you have fulfilled your obligation for 2020. Is that correct? That's correct. And you actually have gone over and above. Uh, I don't think you can ever go over and above. Well. We, just, I mean, we had initial, we had initial commitment from you. You guys have gone way over and above. So first of all, I want to congratulate you. And second of all, I think, you know, and we've talked to uh, our staff about this with the pressures we're feeling with the construction, it is uh, more important than ever that you obviously Mike and uh, Chris Kruger are on the same page in regards to other potential um, donations that are out there. And, and I know you guys are working that hard and I appreciate it. I know we had some disconnects early on, but I, that's really going to be important, I think, moving into early 2021. So I know you're on that and I appreciate that and we need you more than ever. So I think, you know, one of the things we found out with a lot of our connections and some of them have come through you, um, you know, I'm, I'm not afraid to ask and uh, so far the ask has been rewarded many times over. I think one of our successes has to do with our board and another success has to do with our advisory team. We brought people together who knew people. Um, Debbie has been great in connecting some of the people in her building, that fabulous um, Scandinavian, almost brand new furniture that will go, Mike, I think it's in the art area. I can't remember. I mean, it's, there, it was, there were lots of pieces of furniture um, and it's beautiful. It's thick. It's something you're going to be proud of. I think the tables that we, the um, tables they picked up last week are fabulous. And Mike, uh, do you remember, I didn't remember the extra tables that you guys are going to be getting this week. We're going to look at them, but they're similar. I think they're similar to the ones that have already been committed. So are they, so we bought, we got four before, um, and I think we're there. Are these the same height or are these taller? These are 30 inch. I don't know what the original ones are. I think they're the same. Okay. But I don't know the details on that. So uh, Chris and I are going there Thursday to take another look and see what else they have. And I think there's a desk also. Okay. And those storage with the drawers. Right. Right. There's some. For art. Yeah. I mean, there's really beautiful stuff, really beautiful. And, it, and it's gonna fit beautifully in a maker space. Um, I'm pleased that things have turned out the way they have, uh, especially during a pandemic. 
um, we keep reaching out we, um, and seem to be rewarded. So uh, I think part of the reason is you offer such a great product, it's an easy sell. So uh, I wanna thank all of you for making my job as easy as it is. I also want to thank Mary, who is always there supporting us. And Mike and I meet every Thursday afternoon and talk through what's going on, what's needed, who we can reach out to next. Um, and Chris has been a great help too. So I thank you all and I wish you a great holiday. Thank you. Thank you very much. Happy holidays to thank you. Thank you, Laurie. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Lori. Lori Brian. You're doing a phenomenal <laughs> job. <laughs> yeah, everything that everything that both your organizations do to help this library and, and get us going as this makerspace and everything is just awesome. So, so thank you very much, and we're gonna have a great 2021 as we're going into that. We're gonna be leaning on you guys still during that time. So, thank you very much. Tremendous work. Thank you. Okay. Okay, let's move on now to action item one, approval of the minutes of the regular board meeting of November 17th, 2020. Do we have a motion? I'll move approval of the minutes from the regular board meeting of, uh, you want uh, November 17th, 2020. Yep. Do we have a second? Anybody? I second that. Sorry, I had to unmute. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Any any comments on that? Okay. And as we have to do on these on these Zoom calls, Janet, let's do a roll call. Christine Meadow? Yes. Trustee Rule? Yes. Trustee Smart? Yes. Trustee Sufflet? Aye. Trustee Amy? Yes. President Zip. Yes. All right. Thank you. Let's go on to item two now. Review of the financial report for the period ending November 30th, 2020. Who's going to take that? Okay, I guess I can start with that. That's okay. Um, revenue. Let's talk about revenue first. We didn't receive any additional real estate in November, but I want to remind everybody uh, that the numbers reported last month were favorable for us. So we've received 98.2% of budgeted property tax revenue. Um, in a, let's see, donations, November donations totaled $3,809.12. We also received grant funding from District 214 in the amount of $750. On the expense side, 92% of the fiscal year has lapsed and we've expensed only 79% of our annual operating budget. So 16% of our capital projects budget has been expended. Uh, the combined expense is 75% overall. And again, we're 92% of the fiscal year. Um, the favorable variance for the operating budget as of November 30th is 2 million $4,959. Um, just to go over some of that, um, that $2 million is um, partly because makerspace jobs um, were in the budget and we haven't utilized that fully. Um, operating costs for the makerspace were in there and obviously it's not open yet. Um, some of the other things we've done, we've renewed contracts uh, that have saved us some money this year. The hiring freeze due to closures is part of that and uh, reduced spending for programs and travel. So those are some of the reasons we're under budget at this point. Uh, on to the check register, if that's okay. Yep, action item three, I'm gonna move on to that. So on page one, we had some questions. On page one, check number 81053, ALA membership. Uh, the total is $1,097. This is ALA dues uh, for trustees Zick, Rule, Angmi, and uh, the complete library membership as well. There was a question on page one. It's the second item here, check number 81078. CFRA, that's a prepayment, and that is an accounting research and analytics database. 
So that's a prepayment for 2021. Um, also on page one, innovative interfaces, check 81108. And the total of that is 100,743 and 79 cents. This is Sierra. So this is the software, software that we use um, for library management. And we, pre we prepaid this for 2021. And then no before, you'll see that on the first page as well. Check number 81112. This is um, a prepayment for 2021 cyber training software. The service has saved us a lot of money and time by making sure uh, staff recognize cyber threats and dangerous emails. Um, let's see, moving on to page three. Andrea Naughton, uh, check number 81120. There was a question, why is this an HR expense? It's $399.60, um, and this is for our library social club. And the DSSC, the social club inside the library, purchased gingerbread houses in November. So Andrea's expense is being reimbursed here. Okay, uh, there were two more innovative invoices, actually they were credits, um, and they're on page five of the check register. And um, our IT manager, Rich Dorian, uh, pursued credit because there was unused hardware maintenance. Um, so we were able to get two different credits, one for 20,916.09 and one for 10,457.96. And that is all I have. Any questions? Questions for any? Okay. Very good. Um, obviously, you know, uh, being under budget is, is, is always very good. Um, not good reasons though. Why, you know, why, uh, you know, we, we wish we were going in the makerspace. We wish we weren't having all the, uh, uh, all the issues that came with COVID and everything. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, a lot of that money is going to be spent obviously in 2021 uh, based on the, based on the makerspace. Um, I will say, by the way, that no before I've done that training on a couple different things right now, Kevin Mitnick, and uh, it's a very uh, it's a very worthwhile expense. It does save a lot of money. It teaches you things that you that, that people wouldn't think of. So very good. So yeah, any other comments or do we have a, a motion for approval for the check register? I'll move that we approve the accounts payable check register for the Arlington Heights Memorial Library of November 30, 2020 in the amount of $1,039,535.89. Second. Second. Okay, thank you. Janet, roll call, please. Trustee Meadow. Yes. Trustee Rule. Sorry, Brad muted. Yes. Trustee Smart? Yes. Trustee Sepplet? Aye. Trustee Cheney? Yes. President Zip? Yes. Okay. Thank you all very much. Let's go on to the executive director's report. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and walk through the director's report. Okay. John, can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so look, a few things I wanted to highlight this month. First of all, um, we have starting on November 27th, uh, copying, printing, faxing, and scanning services are now available to customers at a new self-service station located in the North vestibule of the library's underground parking garage. Uh, the area is self-directed and is available for customers to use for up to 10 minutes. Uh, equipment includes a simple scan station for faxing and scanning, a color copier, a black and white printer, an express computer station and a shredder. The self-service area is limited to one party at a time and the digital services uh, advisor is available at all times to provide verbal guidance uh, and tech support. Uh, this self-service station is available from the library opening until 15 minutes before the library closes. So this is just another way that we've adjusted. Um, we heard a lot from our customers that they needed access to a lot of the, these digital tools and laptops. Um, this is our answer to that. So this is a safe way that we can um, provide these services uh, within the guidelines provided by the CDC and the Illinois Department of Public Health. Um, 
Also uh, from this area, laptops are available. So um, a customer can come and rent a laptop. Um, they are available on a first come first serve basis and they can be used in the garage or anywhere really. But we do have Wi-Fi coverage in the garage. So if somebody wanted to borrow a laptop and um, sit in their car and uh, use it, they're welcome to do that. Mike, Mike that, it looks great down there. Um, I've driven by you know, and seen it and everything and I saw a line of people waiting. What about when it gets to be, if we get like a really bad snowstorm or anything, since it's kind of like in that, that kind of that open area, I know, I know it's enclosed and everything, but if you think snow and stuff like that could get in there, is anything with that? No, uh, we keep the, the doors are, you know, they're uh, automatic doors, so they stay closed. Um, and rarely would the snow get in that far when, even when we have a pretty intense snowstorm. Um, it might get around the edges of the garage, but this is in the middle, so it's it's uh, tucked in there pretty pretty well. Okay. Any other questions on that, John? You know, uh, Mike just or excuse me, Greg just said he saw a line, and I'm looking at the floors, and I'm not seeing the six foot social distance stickers. Okay. Well, uh, we've got red X's on either side that um, people are supposed to stand in. Uh, okay. Oh, right. I see him in the back. I got him. Thank yeah. you. Anybody else? Mike, do you want some stats on this on popularity? Yeah, yeah. Why don't you get some? So since we rolled this out, we've had a total of 134 customers, which averages to about 19 a day. And the laptop checkout so far is total 13, which is one to two a day. And definitely the most popular service in there is the Express Computer. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, anybody else questions about that? All right, and moving on. Okay, uh, the, our library was one of 11 libraries presenting uh, historian and author, uh, author professor Ibram X. Kendi in a special virtual event on Monday, November 9th. Uh, on this event evening, 5,931 viewers attended the conversation with Dr. Kendi and WBEZ's Natalie Moore, exploring the cause and effects of racism. More than 690 of those viewers identified themselves as learning about the event through our library, making us the library with the second highest attendance. Dr. Kendi offered insights on how to con confront racism, including the most important aspect for organizations and institutions is we need to be asking what we can do to support equity. Kendi said, every institution needs to assess impact of practices and policies and then figure out ways to change policies and practices so that they are just and equitable. So this was a very popular event. This was, um, as I mentioned, a, a partnership with 11 libraries and uh, very well received. Then, Moving on to our One Book, One Village. Uh, we wrapped that up uh, in November with a few events. Um, we had a film discussion on Dr. Shivago. We had a pierogi pop-up on, uh, on Saturday, November 8th. Our super secret swag kits were given away at the pop-up event held in front of a Dutton Avenue entrance. 77 customers registered for uh, the author event or 77 customers that registered for the author event took home novelties to enhance their evening with Laura Prescott from a playlist created by the author to Russian candies and a magnifying glass. Simultaneously, the pierogi rig, a pierogi truck, sold the traditional Russian comfort food to countless Arlington Heights residents and visitors, a huge success on an unseasonably sunny and warm Sunday afternoon. And then five days later, fans of the historical fiction novel, The Secrets We Kept, took a closer look into the history behind the book with its author, Laura Prescott on Thursday evening, November 12th. An evening with Laura Prescott was the signature event for the seventh annual One Book, One Village. It was the first time the library held a virtual One Book, One Village um, uh, signature author event hosted on Zoom, leading to the library welcoming its largest OBOV author audience of more than 390. Laura Prescott kicked off the event by sharing a look into her research into the world of the secrets we kept. Info Services Advisors uh, Alyssa Stanfield and Joan Lasky led Laura in a conversation through excellent questions from attendees. They did an amazing job keeping the conversation moving, approachable and relevant to the Arlington Heights community. 
we will be uh, giving you guys um, a little bit uh, more comprehensive wrap up of the One Book, One Village uh, program at our January meeting. And then next up, I want to highlight Jim, uh, Jim Gibbons. Uh, 88 customers joined the library for a special Vietnam War Veterans Day program featuring historian and season lecturer Jim, Jim Gibbons on Sunday, November 8th. Programs and exhibit specialist Tracy Recklaus partnered with Greg Padovani, chairman of the Veterans Memorial Committee of Arlington Heights, to conceive the event. Jim Gibbons engaged customers with his incredible depth of knowledge, accessible delivery, and infectious love of history. Greg graciously thanked the library for giving him the opportunity to reach out to veterans in our community and provide a program to commemorate the holiday at a time when COVID has made the usual way to honor veterans impossible. Closed captioning was provided during this program, which was a welcome service as the audience was attended by many seniors. All right, then um, I'm gonna ask Mary to talk a little bit about communications and marketing. Uh, over to page 10 here. Okay, so uh, this month, as you guys know, uh, the last few months we've been highlighting ways that we're communicating with our customers through social media or communication channels. Uh, Mary's highlighted a number of uh, our social media platforms over the past few months. And this month um, she did a write up on a couple different um, platforms, but one being our website. Mary, do you wanna comment on this or talk about this at all? Sure thing. Um, the, the website from our initial closing underwent some great changes. Um, we added different areas of the website for job seekers, for businesses, and for customers. And one of the things that's been consistent is the yellow bar across the top. That is the stay informed page notice. And it's been really helpful. We can tweak it as small changes are made and it stands out on the page, but then it links to uh, a text page that has all the changes um, that are going on with services and operations in greater detail. So we um, timestamp each of those changes so that customers can get the latest information possible on all of our services. Um, it's, it's been really helpful and it's super fast to change. Um, another thing that we have been doing is the constant contact emails. Anytime we send out something with a um, service change, we get a huge open rate, usually like 30 or 45%. Um, and that is another way that if people are not looking at our website, um, this way it goes right into their email inbox, um, ready and waiting for them. Um, there's also links in there for them to click through to the website. Sometimes we'll look, uh, link to um, promoting eBooks. We've been doing that quite often now promoting a lot of the e-resources just because they're fast and easy and it's kind of the perfect time for us to promote those products. And then um, the other mode of communication has been social media. Um, when we post service changes, we'll again link to the website so that people can fine tune um, what they're looking for. And um, if we go to the stay informed page, they can find even more information there. And then we get a lot of sharing, we get a lot of comments, and we also get questions through um, Facebook quite a bit that we will answer or else we'll pass them along to other staff for more in-depth uh, answers if needed. Um, and then I just included some of the different social media and constant contact uh, items that went out in November and December regarding service changes. Um, and that's followed then by our social media engagement numbers as well. Anybody have any questions? No, it, it, it's it's you know it's fantastic. I look at this, you know, you you, you emphasize on there, you know, the email for the library service change, you know, with fifty point eight percent open rate. Yeah. That, yeah. That's an incredible, an incredible number. Um, and I look at the, I look at, I look at it's almost thirty thousand sends, so almost thirty thousand emails. Obviously, that means we have. And I, my 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 mind always goes to, boy, how can we get you know, what, what do we have, like 60,000 or 60 plus thousand cards out there, I think, or something like that. 
So it'd be interesting to see how we can get the rest of that. But it, but that's just fantastic. You know, that many people opening in, and, and you know, thirty to forty-five percent open rates on on, on 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 those service emails. That's that's fantastic. Great way of getting the word out. Thank you. John had a question. Yeah, uh, Mary, great report. Thank you very much for the update. I was looking at the constant contact and the total contacts unsubscribed. Uh -huh. we have a, um, bump in November. Do you know what that might be attributed to? So whenever we send those large, um, the large emails, or you know, we have a huge send rate. We also get an unsubscribe rate. Um, we send that message to everyone who signed up for everything with our library and sometimes people don't want to receive things um so the the more you send the larger your unsubscribe rate is we also have begun adding new card holders each month um anybody who we get their email from we add them and we make sure we have a message that if you um aren't interested in receiving, receiving these communications, you can unsus, unsubscribe or change your preferences. So we get a, um, many unsubscribes then as well. But we only wanna be sending to those who want to receive emails. And we're hoping that others um, can follow up through other channels or the website to get information. So the Sorry. Constant, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, you know, the constant contact uh, email database have how many names and how, how do you maintain that database? Well, that's what we pay constant contact for. Um, we add emails from new card holders. We get those from circulation and we input them. And um, so that's how we add names. People can also add their own name on our website. Um, on the news area, the news page, there's a, a link that shows people how to subscribe to those things and get the information that they want to. Um, I think we call it something like get the news exactly that you want to receive. Uh, and then uh, Constant Contact will delete duplicates um, for us or if we're sending to different lists and somebody is on two lists, they won't send those duplicates, they'll only send one. If someone unsubscribes, Constant Contact takes care of that for us. Um, if their email changes or it bounces, we go through that monthly and we, after so many bounces or so many unopens, um, we will uh, look at it a little closer and decide if we wanna delete those permanently. Um, so yeah, I mean, really that's what we have those tools for. Great, thank you very much. Uh -huh. Christy? Uh, I'm sorry I interrupted before. I didn't realize John wasn't done. Um, I just want to be clear. So the open rate is when an individual opens the email mm -hmm. that's been sent to them, but they don't do anything with it. Whereas the click is where there might be an additional link inside that email, just so I understand the differentiation. Right. Open is they open and they could read the whole thing. Okay. Um, not necessarily clicking. That is not measuring clicking. And then click rate is the rate at which they're clicking some of the items in that email. Inside it, okay, right. all right, great. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to make sure. That's fantastic, that's really good. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Mary. Mm -hmm. Anything else for Mary? Okay, I just had one more thing I wanted to highlight on here, and that is uh, beginning January 1st, our programs and exhibits manager, Jennifer Chaika, will become the Laconi, the Library Administrators Conference of Northern Illinois president, guiding it through an interview ripe with possibilities to connect library professionals through the continu continued pandemic. So congratulations to Jennifer um, being the president of that. That is all for the director's report. If um, you guys had any questions, anything in particular or comments? I, I have a question on the dashboard. Yep. Are we gonna go over that mic or? Uh, go ahead and ask, uh, you can just ask your question, I'll address okay. it. Okay, well, if you go over to major projects on the dashboard, uh, gifts and grants Belmont, we are, uh, I'm not sure where we are with updating that because we're only showing $18,731 
in gifts and grants, but we just heard from Lori, it's much more than that, right? Donna, do you want to address the timing of that? A PO was put in the system for 47,000, but that's not included in there. Um, and then as far as the actual dollar amount, in-kind donations are not gonna show up as an amount on there. It's just what's been paid out. Okay. So can we do a little column for in-kind maybe underneath? Sure. Just because we gave them that parameter when they made their $50,000 commitment, correct? Yeah, was it 100,000 or 50? Well, you have uh, 50 on here. I thought it was 150,000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, 150. It so that, that's, the, that's the actual budget. That's not the- Okay, uh, commitment. Right, but I can do a separate sheet with that if you'd like. No, just a little thing underneath would be great. Okay. Okay. Hey, Mike, I was looking on the uh, notes relating to circulation. I, I always love these notes. And, yeah. you know, you look at the um, you look at the second bullet point, last sentence, you know, um, staff help, helping an average of 42 car, cars per hour. And I got to kind of playing it through my head. Obviously, it's a minute, like a minute and 15 per car or something of like that. But all the work that goes along with, with, with doing that, because obviously the holds are being all picked up. And by the way, my, my daughter went today to pick up some holds. Uh, she went through that and she said it went very well. So, so congratulations to everybody in the staff and everything. That's a, that's a, uh, it's a, it, you think about that number and that's, that's consistent. It's not getting a lull in there. That's pretty consistent. And again, when I drove by, drove by just this weekend, I saw a line there too. It was about three or four cars deep. So, you know, thank you for all that work to all the staff. Yeah, the staff are really working hard there. Um, it is, it's, it's tough to get the throughput in, you know, one window, but they're, they're doing it. And, um, it's, you know, the line doesn't get too long. It's, it's uh, a good steady pace. So, um, yeah, but it's, uh, it's a result of the hard work that the staff are doing down there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Anything else from Mike? Yes. Yes. Right. I just want to make a comment. Uh, I attended partially, not every, the whole one of three different programs this past month. And they were phenomenal. I really have to recommend. I, I saw the v Vietnam War one. The one on cocktails was uh, hilarious. <laughs> it was just great. So I thank you. You're doing a great job in selecting some things and keeping people busy at night. I think it's great. Great to hear. Thanks. All right. That's all. We're going to move on. Thank you very much. Let's go on to action item four, adoption of policy revisions to human resource policies, bereavement, holidays, personal leave, sick leave, vacation, and employment, and benefit categories. I love those long ones. Okay. So this is the culmination of policies that we've been discussing at the Committee of the Whole meetings uh, over the last couple months. Um, most of these changes, as uh, I state here in the memo, uh, are a result of changes in process since moving to our new timekeeping system a couple of years ago uh, and reflective of changes uh, based on what we talked about uh, at the board level. Um, the largest and most significant changes of these policies include the removal of the Columbus Day holiday, the addition of a second observance day holiday, uh, paid bereavement leave will be made available to all staff. Bereavement leave is no longer accrued throughout the year. Instead, it's just available to all staff. And then uh, the bereavement and personal leave policies have been separated into two policies because of that change and who it applies to. It made it much more clear uh, if we separated that out into two policies. So the differences that you're seeing here, uh, as opposed to what you saw at the last committee, the whole meeting, is the um, uh, application of bereavement leave to all staff and then separating out those two policies. And that was based on the conversation that we had at that meeting. So. If you guys have any questions on these policies, I'd be happy to address them. Okay. Anything? All right. Um, now there's no written action item statement. I'll move that the Board of Library Trustees adopts revisions to the employment and benefit categories, bereavement, holidays, personal leave, sick leave, and vacation policies. And there you go. Any seconds? Second. Okay. All right. Any more comments, questions? I see none. So Janet, roll call, please. See metal. 
Yes. Trustee Rule. Yes. Trustee Smart. Yes. Trustee Supplet. Aye. Trustee Tangney. Yes. President Zick. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, let's go on to action item five, revisions to the 2021 library holiday dates and closings. Okay, so now that we approve those holiday changes uh, in that policy, that has an impact on our um, closing schedule. So previously uh, we had approved the holiday and closing schedule uh, for 2021 to include Columbus Day. Um, since we will be um, no longer recognizing that in our holiday um, policy, uh, the recommendation would be to remove that from the closing schedule. Now we are not, we were not closed on that date anyway, but um, removing that from here would make this consistent with our holiday um, policy. So it is no longer considered a, a paid holiday anymore um, as it was before a um, floating holiday. And then, um, so that would be removed. And then the addition of the second observance day would be added uh, in this policy. And then also, um, I want to just make you guys aware with, because of COVID, um, our, we had previously approved to be closed on March 5th for Staff Development Day. We don't exactly know what that's going to look like, but we are looking at um, changing that format up this year, making it virtual and spreading it out throughout the year as opposed to having one day specifically for that. So I don't need, know that we actually need to change the schedule, but I do want to make you aware that that format may change and we may not close the library on March 5th. Okay. Okay. Do we have a motion on this? Yes. I so move. Um, Board of Library Trustees approves the revised 2021 library holiday dates and closings. Do the second. Second. Thank you, Carol. Janet, roll call, please. Trustee Meadow. Yes. Trustee Rule. Yes. Trustee Smart. Yes. Trustee Supplet. Aye. Trustee Taney? Yes. President Zick? Yes. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. On to item six, the employee engagement survey. And I was looking forward to this, Lisa. Where are you? You're on my screen somewhere, aren't you? Did she drop off? She was just here. Um, she was here. <laughs> here's that she may have dropped off. The chat comment. What does that say? Oh, yes. Okay. Let me try and get a hold of her real quick and uh, okay. come back. Oh, Lori, can you play the piano? <laughs> <laughs> Greg, um, our librarians updated the holiday read section of the web website that you were talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so they added um, holiday music, ebooks, and audiobooks. So there's a bigger selection on there now. Oh, great. Great, great, great. Yeah, I always try to find a new uh, book at Christmas time to, to the holiday time to, to, to read during this month. Mary, where is that located on the uh, homepage? I'm on there now. Uh, it's a news item, but I can also, There's... let's see. I can chat the link of the full news item. There you go, it's in chat. So they, um, in addition to their best of 2020 book lists that each of our um, advisors had written, uh, there was holiday books and movies. And John was saying that so many of them were checked out. It was a really popular list. So um, they have added some of the e-movies, e-books and audio books, as well as music that people can stream or download, um, some that are available immediately uh, without any waits. John, you can also find them under services, reader services, and you can uh, do a drop down to get all of the lists. Uh, that is your ebook commercial. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Mike, uh, while we're waiting to see if Lisa can get back on, is, is there any other new business at this time? Uh, that is all. So I just talked to Lisa, she, her internet dropped off. So she is desperately trying to get back connected. Um, oh. she, uh, she's, well, she's trying to connect back up uh, right now. Okay, yeah, we'll give her another minute. Technology stress. <laughs> I do have an other just um, to let the board know that off a couple of days coming up. Um, I'll email you guys the exact dates, uh, but I, I'll be off tomorrow a couple of days next week. What I love about these Zoom things is when the screen, when everybody on the screen where you are located they just change mm -hmm. it's kind of like shannon when you were just talking a minute ago you were down to my left hand uh, toward the bottom and all of a sudden i look down there and brian's down there now i'm like what happened to shannon <laughs> oh she's up there so is there competition among staff to do the library's 2020 best lists <laughs> We could probably check how many how many views. Although I don't know that a view counts. I don't know if they do they check circulation. Yeah, that would be the competition. What's checked out? Yeah, and they all have you know the readers advisors. They have uh, specialties. So some like John Fryer um, do nonfiction. Um, some might do cozy reads. So it's not going to be quite apples to apples, but. So Love Actually is considered a Christmas movie? I think it takes place over the holiday. I'm not sure. It does. It does indeed. Quite a famous oh, holiday movie. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking for Die Hard. Yeah, I was going to say Die Hard. <laughs> Die Never Hard, yeah. You got that one. You're going to include Love Actually. I have a question. Does the library staff do reviews of new books? In other words, affiliated when, you know, when you do the search for an individual book, do they, you know, how a lot of um, websites do reviews on books? Do we do any of that or no? We do have staff reviews, right? Their favorite picks. Mm -hmm. We do. There'd be more recommendations than reviews, but yes, they do. Okay. All right. Because the one that our entire medical center is reading right now is cast. Yeah. And I can see that there's 38 holes on it right now um, on 13 copies. So. I, I was one of the lucky winners for cast. You got it? Well, I'm there, but I was reading her previous book at the same time. Oh. And because it's a new title, you only get it for two weeks. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't. I don't even know if the binding was cracked on the one I had. <laughs> so it was. Uh, it's really good. Her uh, uh, warmth of other suns is. It's a fant It's a fantastic read. It's. Um, it's more like reading sociology than it is stories. And she's using the stories as support for her, her perspectives, which is really, I, to me, very appealing. So. Um, I can hardly wait to get to cast because I think she has laid the groundwork for that extremely well. That's great. So and then, and then you reflect on your own circumstances because casts don't necessarily know color. Right. And, right. and you wonder uh, and you begin to wonder as to how folks are where they are and how how much of that was legacy? Yeah. Um, how about we do this, everybody? Um, why don't we, we do need to go into closed session. Um, why don't oh, we- Here comes oh. Lisa. Oh, never okay. mind. Forget that thought. 
Let's hope you hang on, Lisa. <laughs> oh, yeah. You guys, if this is in 2020 at its best, I don't know what is. <laughs> yeah, right. Thank you for your patience. Okay. You're, you're up. Yeah. Okay. When my computer was working and I didn't have to do this on my phone, I had a lovely um, uh, picture of that uh, winning gingerbread house that we were talking about earlier with the, the staff event. So I'll have to make sure to get that to y'all later. <laughs> um, and I also had a little slide, show, but we're just going to wing it here today instead. So um, just a quick recap of the last time we as a group sat down and talked about the employee engagement survey was in May. And at that point we had the results of our survey. So you may recall the survey actually occurred in February. We had a great participation rate. 87% of our staff participated. Um, the results came back wonderfully, um, about 77% positive, just shy of 77% positive. So really, really great results. Um, and it was, it was a wonderful, wonderful um, survey. We had all departments who received at least three responses got individualized results. So the vast majority of managers got to see individual breakout results for their team, including specific comments. And, and they were really appreciative of that. Um, what we did from there is we required and requested um, all managers to complete an action plan based on the results that they received. And so we ended up with 16 action plans overall. And each manager had an individual one-on-one -on -one meeting about their action plan, either with myself, with their director, or with both of us together. Um, and they were, they were great meetings, really productive. Um, I was really impressed with how engaged in the process everybody was and, and eager to, you know, explore the topics further, quite honestly. So that was great. We did have um, a few category, a few categories of overarching themes. So we told the, the direction we gave the managers about action planning was actually fairly minimal. You know, we said, pick things that you think are important, things that are going to contribute to department goals, library goals, strategic plan. Um, you know your team, you know what works well, what doesn't work well, what you need to work on. And, 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 and really, I was there as a resource to help refine. And so the top themes that or action items that people chose to, to action plan around were communication, and then training slash career development. So we had um, 10 individual action items. So essentially 10 of the 16 action plans all had one of those, those items on it. Um, other big items talked about the work environment. So that was things like safety, decision-making, relationships with coworkers, that sort of stuff. Had a fair amount who talked about change management. Um, now remember the survey took place pre-COVID. So we've gotten a bit more comfortable with change, um, at least accepting of it, if nothing else. So it'd be interesting to see how that might be different now. And then we did have um, compensation as an action plan theme as well for, for a small percentage. So overall, um, really, really applicable topics, you know, in a library our size, in any organization really uh, of this sort of size, I think um, communication and career development are always important priorities for, for staff. Um, so I think really, really great focuses. Um, and I'm, I'm excited to see what will come of that. You know, there's of course some lessons learned along the way. Um, I was very, I don't want to say surprised, but, but, but pleasantly so that everybody was so appreciative for the feedback. Um, you know, seeing the managers just really appreciate the fact that, we took the time to ask the staff their opinion and we got their feedback. And, and I think that was, that was just wonderful. Um, another thing that was a bit of a learning curve for all of us is remembering and learning to view positive items as actionable. Um, you know, with such positive results overall, there weren't a lot of problems per se. And, and many managers were trying to find a problem where there wasn't one. Um, so, so remembering that, sometimes taking the time to action plan and focus on your secret sauce is the important thing to do. If you are doing something and it's working great, 
you don't want to jeopardize that. So you want to action plan around how do we make sure we keep doing this piece really, really well. Um, so that was that was a great learning opportunity for all of us. Um, certainly going to be a challenge to always, you know, keep keep everything um, action plans alive, you know, and see how things change. Um, you know, so so making sure we keep it in the forefront, and then our next survey will be in Q1 of 2022. So that's sort of where we're at with that. Um, does anybody have questions about that? So are these action plans that are going to be implemented by the different managers in those departments? Or are there, is there anything that's also going to be library wide? You know, that we took, because I mean, when you talk about things like communication and training, career development, you know, being, was it 10 to 16, I think you said, you know, I mean, that's, it, it, that's obviously means that's a huge thing, you know, library wide, or, yeah. or we just try to expand that in any way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and I've talked with Mike and the administrative team quite at depth about a library wide overall action plan. So yes, that, those are, those are on there. Okay. And these are action plans that are being implemented right now, or are they things that they're still trying to figure out what to do for them? They are being implemented. A combination of both. Some things take a little bit of lead time and some things are, are happening already. So, look, okay, so, so th and this is always a big one with, with, with his, when we put in action items like plans like that. I know you're gonna do the next survey, 2020, Q1 2022, I think you said. How do we know that these are working though, uh, as, as, we're, as we're moving along? I'm here. I'm here. Sorry. Um, yeah. So, so that's, that's going to be the challenge, right? With keeping them alive. So it's going to be working with the, with the managers to make sure that these stay living, breathing documents and that we, that we don't, we don't let it fall by the wayside and it doesn't just get, you know, tucked in a file drawer and, and that we are achieving the goals we're looking for. So that, that'll have to be a continual focus for, both myself and the administrative team to to keep it um, in the forefront with with managers until the next survey. I, I imagine they're going to be integrated into their reviews, correct? From the you know, managers? we haven't had any conversation around that yet. Um, I think it probably depends on what the action action item was, and um, you know what. What, does it make sense to have it as a goal for the review or not? Okay. Yeah, because you, you know, obviously, our, our, our customers and the people of the village using the library, they're 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 they're, they're uh, probably our most important. But the staff, obviously, is just as important. So, obviously, I think we have a good environment overall. Um, obviously, this time had, like you said, the survey was done before we all 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 this broke loose. So. There's a part of me that's wondering if we shouldn't do something sooner than 2022. I know we don't want to inundate or overdo the, these type of things because they lose their, yeah. their, their, their um, you know, if, if, if as you do that. But I think somehow we have to make sure that we're, we're, we're doing the right things right now. Yeah, and, and the administrative team and I actually just talked about that this week. Um, and, you know, we're, we're definitely relying on a lot of different methods to sort of get the pulse of where things are at at the moment. Um, and then we did talk about are there certain things that, you know, it, it's never really a great idea to follow up a survey with another survey. You know, then people get a lot of survey fatigue, same questions. But, you know, finding some of those more, um, you know, less, less formal, but equally informative ways to get some of that information um, is, is key. And, and honestly, I think a lot of it has to do with just listening, listening all the time, um, going out and seeking feedback from staff, from, from supervisors and, and hearing what everybody has to say, um, which has given us a pretty good pulse on, on what's changing and what hasn't changed, you know, as a result of um, all the COVID changes. Okay, John. Yeah, uh, thanks, Greg. The question really is with respect to how 
do we engage employees now in the process going forward? So we have managers doing action plans and we've got the data that shows us how they responded when we took the, the survey in, in February. Is there a, a process by which we continue to engage employees either through a committee or some other work groups to, to oversee the, the progress and the implementation of the survey findings between now and the next survey? Yeah, so great question. So at this point, staff level have not been um, incorporated into the planning process of the engagement survey. Um, keeping in mind, this is the first time um, that I am aware of um, that the, the library has undertook uh, a traditional employee engagement survey that's been benchmarked. Um, beforehand, it was, it was sort of just an internal, um, you know, we, we benchmark against ourselves. Uh, so I, I don't think it would be fair to incorporate the staff to have to be accountable for this when the, the management team is still sort of learning it themselves as well. Um, but I think your point about how do we engage the staff in the changes that will be taking place is exactly the questions that, that in the conversations we've been having with the management team in terms of what are we doing with these action plans? Because there has to be a component that the staff um, know we are taking these actions as a result of the employee right. engagement. Because right? those dots need to be connected for people. Otherwise, they're, they're not going to know that gee, it's because of your feedback is why we're making these changes or asking you these questions. Well, and I would just suggest that for the purposes of transparency and, and administrative team credibility, the more you can work with uh, staff to engage them in this process, the better it will be for you, especially as you go into the next survey, uh, uh, round of surveys. I agree fully. All right, very good. Any other questions for Lisa or comments? Okay, all right, well, thank you very much. Thanks for, 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 for the update. Obviously this is, uh, you know, uh, something that we, we feel very strongly about, wanna keep this going, wanna make sure the staff is as happy as uh, they possibly can be. So, uh, so thank you very much. Great thank job you. on a really important project. Yep. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. All right, well, we already went, said there was no new business. We did your other, so I guess we need a motion now to go into closed session. I move we go into closed session in accordance with 5 ILCS 120-2C1 to conduct executive director's annual performance evaluation. We have a second. I second. Hey, Janet, can you roll call on that? Trustee Metal. Yes. Trustee Rule. Yes. Trustee Smart. Yes. Trustee Supplet. Aye. Trustee Tangney. Yes. President Zick. Yes. Okay, so anybody watching, what we're going to do right now is trustees, or we're going to drop off this uh, presentation and we're going to go to a uh, go to another one. This will not end, though, because as soon as we are done with that closed session, we will be coming right back here to uh, to, to, to close out to close out the meeting. So, thank you all very much, and uh, trustees, see you in a uh, trustees. If you need to take five minutes or so uh, before we get on, that's fine. We'll we'll see you in about five minutes or so. Okay, I. But just once I've done all this, I got to get myself back in habit. Um, can everybody hear me? Are we all back on? Yep. Yeah, we need a motion to come back in the session. Um, motion to come back into the open session of the Board of Library Trustees meeting for Tuesday, December 15th, 2020. I so move. Second. Second. Okay, so we're going to do this as introductions too. So I'm just going as my screen. So, John. Here. Uh, Christy, Christy. Yes, here. <laughs> Debbie. Yes. Andy. Andy there. 
Unmute, Andy. <laughs> yes. Okay, and I'm, and I'm here too, yes. Okay. Okay. Carol, yes. Can you hear me? You're all, Hi, Carol. Carol. Can you hear me? You're right, you're right in the middle. Oh, of the you Did I miss Debbie too? Hello? And Debbie, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, we have a couple actions that we need to do. Um, actually, just one right now. Um, so the item for from closed session, we need a motion right now for Mike Driscoll, the executive director, a 0.8% increase in salary, um, along with a Remuneration and recognition of the co of completion of his ML MLIS um, is contingent as part of his hiring as role as executive director for the amount of five thousand dollars. Do we have a I motion saw, for that? Yeah, I I so move. Okay. I second. Second. Okay, uh, Janet, can you do a roll call on that, please? Adam. Yes. Trustee Rule. Yes. Trustee Smart. Yes. Yes. Trustee Supplet. Aye. Trustee Tangney. Yes. President Zick. Yes. Okay. Um, and I think that's it. I think we just need a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Okay, Janet, let's do one more. Uh, more one more. Trustee Yes. <laughs> Trustee Rule. Yes. Trustee Smart. Uh, yes. Trustee Supplet. Aye. Trustee Tanky. Yes. President Zick. Yes. Okay. Thank you all very much. We made it to the holiday. Yes. We made it to the holiday. Have a Merry happy Christmas. holiday. Happy holiday. What a year, man. What a year. Yep. May 2021 be a whole lot better. <laughs> yeah, stay the course, one and all. <laughs> Take care. Be safe. Yeah, happy holidays, everybody. Happy Bye -bye.